Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning on the West Coast. Good afternoon to the East Coast. Good evening for anybody in Israel and Europe. I'm Alan Abbey, and sitting here with me tonight are Rachel Shabbat Beit Halachmi and Yossi Klein Halevi, who are going to discuss the article that they wrote for the Jewish Week uh, I Engage column, Point Counterpoint, which is a joint project of the Shalom Hartman Institute and the Jewish Week, and their uh, debate, their back and forth, uh, drew so much interest from you and many others that we felt we wanted to continue the conversation. And of course, since last Friday was Rosh Chodesh, uh, and there was another uh, effort at the Kotel by Women of the Wall to exercise what they believe are their rights, and the police did what they did. We have actually developments since their article, so we're going to spend a few minutes talking about what's happened in the last few days, and you'll see and Rachel are going to go over their uh, point, and uh, we have a few questions as well. Uh, Yossi, your point, and in, in many ways you and Rachel agreed on a lot of points, but the key area that you disagreed on was whether the protests at the Kotel itself should continue. And if I, correct me if I'm quoting you incorrectly, but what you said was that uh, women of the world should declare victory and move over to Robinson's Arch, which maybe you can explain a bit to folks who may not know what it is, and not make that monthly uh, effort at the Koto, which always, almost always ends in arrests and uh, a media frenzy, and maybe not much progress, or maybe you feel this progress. Well, Rahel and I are agreed on the goal. We're, we're agreed about the most important issue, which is that the Koto should represent the full spectrum of the Jewish people, of Jewish prayer. There should be Orthodox prayer, there should be Haredi prayer, there should be egalitarian prayer, there should be women's prayer. And in that sense, I, I totally embrace uh, Rachel's vision, it's my vision as well. The, the tragedy of, uh, of the Kotel is that it has fallen into, in effect, ultra-Orthodox hands. And there is no way to pry the Kotel, at least the area of the wall that we identify today as the Kotel, uh, from those hands without creating a major cat cataclysm uh, within, uh, within the Jewish people in, in the state of Israel. The question then is, does one simply give up and allow the violence on the other side to, uh, to have veto power over, over women's prayer. And fortunately, the state of Israel, uh, after being pushed by the Supreme Court, uh, the government has uh, announced that it is going to renovate the area uh, known as Robinson's Arch, which uh, is between the Kotel and the archeological garden. Uh, and uh, it is in effect an extension of the Kotel. And my argument, my plea, really, to women of the wall and to, uh, and to those who actively support them abroad is to declare victory. This is an unprecedented opportunity where the Israeli government is going to allocate part of the wall for egalitarian prayer, for women's prayer. And this is a moment, I think, this is really a, a challenge to uh, the non-Orthodox denominations and to the women of the wall. Uh, and that challenge is, do we, and I say we because I deeply am part of, of the movement for a pluralistic, religiously pluralistic Israel, do we at this point can declare victory and force the government to create a, a suitable space in Robinson's Arch, not a token renovation, but really call the government on its plans? Or do we uh, continue and say, well, we'll just beat our heads against the wall, figuratively and, and literally, uh, and, uh, <laughs> uh, or, and, uh, and to continue what is a, few, a futile effort uh, and that only results in bitterness, in frustration, and in Chilul Hashem, in desecration of the name of, of God and of the state of Israel. Rabbi Dr. Rachel uh, Shabbat Behalachmi, a senior fellow at the Hartman Institute, 
you are a reform rabbi. I'm sure you're personally and spiritually close to a lot of the participants in the monthly uh, activities. Your position is in on at the base, perhaps similar to Yossi's, except, and I don't want to limit our conversation simply to tactics, but I think you feel that the tactics are symbolic of a larger issue. Uh, that's very correct, and, and I, uh, I appreciate you highlighting that. I think that really the difference between Yossi and myself is uh, in perception, uh, and perception from within Israel and outside Israel. I think actually it would be a much larger tragedy uh, to do what you're proposing, which would be to declare victory and, from my perspective, to accept, uh, accept Robinson's arch, which uh, I myself have led many, uh, many ceremony at. But that, to me, and I think for many liberal Jews, would be like Rosa, asking Rosa Parks to accept sitting at the back of the bus. Don't worry, honey, we'll have nice air conditioning. The upholstery of the seat, if you want, even will be made wonderful. It'll be made accessible uh, for those with special needs. But that's really where you belong, at the center, at the front, at the place where the Jewish people have understood it to be a symbol of coming home to Jerusalem, coming home to the Jewish state. We don't really want you there. Your prayer, our prayer, of liberal Jews or non-Orthodox Jews is not wanted there, not accepted there. And I think it would be a bigger tragedy for the Israeli government and for the Jewish people to relinquish such a profound site just to one element of the Jewish people. I think that would be enormously tragic. Now what's fascinating is that uh, in the last few months there have been discussions about other options, uh, including the greater accessibility of, uh, of Robinson's Arch, which is not very accessible if you're dealing with Anybody with special needs, it's not accessible. If you're dealing with uh, specific hours during the day when it's not open, not accessible. Uh, we have to pay entrance fees, but it is hardly, I would say, at all an equal uh, access opportunity. So uh, another option that's being discussed and actually debated is the possibility of having a third area at the main hotel, whether it be a men's section, a women's section, and a mix, if you will, or a pluralistic section. So we would add in this you know, 60 meter area of the main hotel, an additional area, a kind of <coughs> different kind of time sharing. Now different groups are in favor of this or against this. It's been in discussion with, uh, uh, with the Prime Minister's office and with other groups. And it's very interesting that uh, many women of the wall themselves feel it enough of that we don't want more mechitzot in the world. We don't want more fences, more separations. What we want actually uh, and perhaps this is something that came up in our article as well, is the opportunity for there to be some even hours of the day where there can be mechitzot and it can be in the hands of one interpretation of Judaism, other hours of the day, of the week, of the month, where it can be accessible in a place of prayer and spiritual homecoming for all of Jewry. So I think there are many other ways of imagining it, and I, I guess what I really don't accept is your, your absolute conviction that it is uh, an impossible situation. I think there are many potential solutions that are, are literally on the table uh, before us. You know, Rafael, you were saying before that we don't we don't want the Kotel to be turned over to only one denomination. The problem is it happened 47 years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's been the status quo for 47 years. And it's an awful status quo. But these demonstrations, and especially as, as, a, and as I wrote to you in, in our exchange, using prayer as a means for demonstration isn't going to work. And, and the, look, the time because show. Because all the men's prayer then is a demonstration. Well, listen, you know, when, 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 the when, 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 when the men turn against the women in, in, the, in those ugly scenes, then it's, uh, it's worse than a demonstration. And, but the, the, no, but if the, women's prayer is perceived as a demonstration, why isn't the men's prayer a demonstration against the uh, egalitarian prayer? Because it is specifically being being used as a means to draw media, and and that is, to my mind, a manipulation mm -hmm. of prayer. But let's let's leave that argument aside. But I, it's, it's a very important argument between us. But let's. I I just want to address some of the points that you, you just made. So the. The option that you say is now being debated uh, among uh, among women of the wall about a time sharing, it's, that's a wonderful option. But you're talking to yourselves. No, it's, it's not. The it's, 
Rachel gets in after it's out. Halavai. I, here, I really hope I'm wrong, mm -hmm. and it would be a wonderful breakthrough, and then let's forget about Rav as it's March. If that could happen. Well, Orthodox prayer or welcome the Rav as March, too. Okay, Rachel, look, if, 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 if the time sharing were to happen, we are really in, in the Messianic world. In Robinson's Arch is, a, is an unfortunate fallback option mm -hmm. in the pre-Messianic era. Now, all of the reservations mm -hmm. that you raised before are right. The Robinson's Arch, as it currently is, is, is constructed, is not suitable. But that's exactly where I would like to see the pressure being applied on these Make the back of the box nicer. Well, listen, you, and okay, so now let's let's deal let's deal with back of the bus. You have a situation where yes, the coattail as we know it, that is the, the, the focus, that's that's the front. What we're facing, those of us who believe deeply in religious pluralism in Israel, it's not only the issue of the law, it's it's recognizing the right of reform and conservative it's rabbis to uh, to, 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 to conduct weddings, to convert uh, people into Judaism. It's, 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 it's the whole, it's the whole range. Now, we are at an extraordinary moment, I think, and you know this, and we here at, at, at Hartman are living this every day. We are seeing the beginning of a, a, a flowering of non-Orthodox, religious, indigenous, forms of Israeli Judaism. And just one example, which, which, which we all know, and maybe so, and I'm sure some of our viewers know this too, Beit Fila Yisraeli, which is a non-Orthodox Its leader Torah was just ordained by the Reform uh, Seminary. Who's that? Esther. Oh, no, he kidding. Was just ordained. Uh, okay. So, so uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure some, of our, some of our viewers uh, have attended services there. Friday night in the summer, it's an extraordinary experience, hundreds of people. And, um, and what's really significant is that it is being subsidized and officially sponsored by the Tel Aviv municipality. You walk around at the port in the summer months, and there are banners uh, from the municipality advertising this non-Orthodox so account. Not, no, but what I'm saying is that this is a moment where for the first time below the top level. The top level in this generation, unfortunately, I don't believe that we're going to topple the chief rabbit. Holiday. I don't see it. Mm -hmm. But the well, chat, so, anybody. Well, I just want to share space. Okay. So the question is, where are we going to share the space? Nobody is going to give us mm -hmm. the space unless we create the space. They created a space at the Tel Aviv port and the municipality came in and endorsed it. The soldiers and the forces of the state of Israel, with a lot of support of the non-Orthodox Jews all over the world, created that space at the Kotel. It belongs to us. Okay. Yes. Yes. And I and I I wish no less than the I wish that 47 years ago mm -hmm. that had been government policy. The question now is how do we move forward? How do we expand the space? Of, mm -hmm. uh, of religious pluralism in Israel. Do we, do we do it by confronting full force and by using tactics that have failed mm -hmm. for 25 years? Or do we use the Tel Aviv court as model and say, you know what? You can have your ball. Mm -hmm. we're, going to, we're going to play with our own ball. Mm -hmm. and, and we are going to create a space, of, a part of the Kotel, that is no less sacred mm -hmm. than the other Kotel. I will not let you define what, what the Kotel is. This mm -hmm. is now going to be a part of the Kotel that I'm sanctifying with modern prayer, mm -hmm. with, with a, with, in a way that not only most diaspora Jews will be comfortable with, but I think many Israeli Jews who stopped going to the Kotel years ago. Isn't that unfortunate? It's, it's more it's than tragic. unfortunate. It's tragic. But you want to perpetuate it. I don't want to perpetuate it. I want to create a space, an alternative space because if you continue well, we, we have that you'll see here's, here's the thing that you and i i want to just be here with it let's say that i agree okay then we can <laughs> 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 so here's the thing let's let's see, let's let's uh let's say that i agree with you we have multiple spaces in, the, in this uh amazingly uh, 
amazing time in Jewish history, in the Jewish state. And I've been part of many of these things, as you know. But it, there's a group of people in the thousands whose connection to this place and to this time is the comfort. You and I, no matter what we say tonight, aren't going to be able, I don't believe, no matter what we would possibly say, to change that ground swell of love and concern for what's happening. Right. Well, that's that you don't you 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 don't believe in the understand. spiritual power of the non-orthodox denominations to create a sacred space. We, we're in the middle of okay. One of the wait wait here's let's here's remember the that one of the goals of this project is to be able to find a way to disagree in a way that we can be talking to each other. And of course, I don't need to remind that. We we we're, 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 we're loving friends at the end of the day. My point, however, is the end of that sentence is this ground swell of love and concern and support of women of the law, regardless of what you and I may say, I think symbolizes something so great that regardless of any success of litigation uh, or political pressure, actually is something that ought to be harness and will continue and should continue in terms of the power of what it represents of the Jewish people's call to want to still be present and have a voice at way they understand to be Kodesh Kodeshi, right? The sanctity of the sanctity of Jerusalem. To try to silence it or put it aside, I think will ultimately fail and be tragic. I agree with every word you said until the last words about putting it aside. That's how, how it's understood, we, though. So, but this, is, but this is the problem. Mm -hmm. How do we take all of that devotion mm -hmm. and all of that, that love and determination, where is it going to go? If it continues to go in the direction that, that, that the non-Orthodox movements have uh, been promoting, mass letter-writing campaigns to the Israeli embassy, political activism, mm -hmm. we're missing a, a, an essential spiritual mm -hmm. moment which is to take all of that spiritual power mm -hmm. and not channel it into political activism, mm -hmm. but turn it into genuine devotion. Create a space at the wall that's no less Kodesh HaKadoshim mm -hmm. than, than, uh, than what we, we now are, consider we are, the Kodesh. We are doing that. We do that every day. I myself have been doing that for years. Here's the question, though. And this is happening. I'm actually myself leading our bar mitzvah service uh, there next Thursday. Uh, and it's very interesting, how do you explain to young David that he's not allowed to have the kind of service that he's used to at that main cocktail site, but he needs to have it here, right? No matter how much devotion I and the hundreds of other rabbis who conduct services during the course of the year at Robinson's Arch have, there is something very problematic about that perceived secondary site. And I think there is no way to change that perception and that experience. Devotion, I think we have, and you've actually named uh, the many ways in which it's expressing itself. What I think we have here is a big question uh, for the Jewish people, really, because we've talked about it on many levels. There's the level of civil rights, there's the level of pluralism, there's the level of freedom of religion. Um, I want to speak about it in larger terms about the Jewish people. What will it mean for the Jewish people to continue a connection and an energy focus, focus at a shared space and work out a timeshare, which actually would be no different, perhaps, than the timeshare uh, in Hebron, in Hebron, at the at the uh, uh, the cave of the matriarchs and patriarchs, right at the tomb. There's a per hours per day. It's shared amongst even different religions. And that is something that special forces, you and I have been there in many different situations ourselves, special forces of the Israeli government and of the police force are able to enforce. And I think that it is a powerful model that I believe could and should be perhaps employed uh, at the Kotel. And that would be something that is possible. Halavai. You might not have imagined possible Hevron years ago. Halavai. Halavai. Uh, Hevron was built in from June 1967, this, this idea of, of sharing space. And to, again, Rachel, to reverse 47 years of status quo with the, the grip mm -hmm. that the Orthodox establishment and the Haredi world has today on that part of the wall. And I'm going to emphasize that part of the wall, because the other part that we're talking about is also part of the wall. Mm -hmm. 
And what, I, what I'm concerned about is a kind of defeatism in what sounds like a, a, a determination and, and, and will is, is really a recipe for defeatism. Because you are telling the non-Orthodox Jewish world to continue its campaign in an area that it can't win. If the, if the Israeli government had not offered to, to renovate Robinson's Arch, and this is a new development, then I would say, well, we're really, we're really talking about the back of the bus. We have the chance here to, 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 to build our own bus. Right. And instead of seeing this in terms of inferiority, mm -hmm. the challenge that we have, and it's beyond it's beyond Robinson's arch. Right. It's be, the question here is beyond Robinson's arch. It goes to the question of, um, of again, how do we how do we expand religious pluralism here? Is it by fighting the cheap rabbinate, mm -hmm. or is it by creating more communities like the like the mm -hmm. Tel Aviv courts? Is it is it is it fighting the Orthodox establishment mm -hmm. on the Kotel? And believe me, Rachel, I know that world mm -hmm. and I know the Orthodox establishment. It is a losing battle, but there is a battle that we can win. If you continue to frame it in terms of back of the bus instead of creating an alternative bus, mm -hmm. then I'm afraid that it's going to be a self reported problem. Wait, does that mean that you're in favor of segregation of buses too? You mean for women? Yeah. Oh, let's not go there. No, it's actually real. You're arguing that we women accept something that we don't believe is equal. I'll make you a deal. If the authority are willing to do equal distribution of all the resources of the Ministry of Religion and Culture and Sport to non-Orthodox synagogues and efforts everywhere in the country, and there's truly separate but equal, then I think your argument I would completely be able to accept. Yes. I would, but yeah. my point is that it's not about what I think. I'm actually very much connected to millions, hundreds of thousands and millions of Jews who understand that place is the culture to belong to the Jewish people, okay. regardless of okay. the deal that was made. Here's, here's where I... Here, here, and that's one, why I, I think we should accept the readers in the reality that you're not accepting. Okay, I, I understand that. What I'm saying is we're going to need to create a new reality. That takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about this as, as a women's created. issue, when you're saying that what I, I'm saying to women if, I'm not saying you, I'm saying we, because I'm also talking about, I'm also speaking as a religious non-Orthodox Jew who believes in egalitarian prayer and who will be at Robinson's Arch. I'm not sending you to Robinson's Arch. I'm sending us to us to Robinson's Arch. I'd love to be there, but I'm talking about, I'm really talk, seriously, I'm talking about us creating a space at Robinson's Arch. Then all it's of us should be there. No, then it's all of us should be there. Then I would call out mm -hmm. to every non Orthodox yes. person and yes. say, Here come to Robinson's Arch call. and don't go to the main culture if you want to establish Robinson's That's Arch. That's what I'm talking about. Then you can't go to the main mm -hmm. culture. Let's that would be so, maybe so. Okay. Maybe so. Maybe that's really where this is heading. But it's certainly, too crowded there, by the way. If you all came, there is no yeah, But <laughs> certainly, but okay, as, as a first step, yeah. When these renovations happen, I think two things need to happen. First of all, we have to call the Israeli government on the nature of these renovations. Will will, will, it, will there be a separate accessible entrance? You no, know, they're claiming that there will be. Here's the problem. You want to know what an additional problem is? You know who's now going to be angry at us? The archaeological community. We'll live with it. Is a, it is a, no, it is completely and unfair from their perspective. An un fair takeover of a very important archaeological site. So I'm really not sure, since I have friends in that world too, I'm, you know, if you have friends in that world, I have friends in that world, uh, I'm not sure that that's really a solution. Right. Well, look, what I really feel needs to happen mm -hmm. here is that, is that first of all, we have to make sure that, that the renovations, we have to make sure that the renovations mm -hmm. are serious okay. and not cosmetic. And then the second thing that I, would hope would happen. And here, really, I'm turning to, to, to diaspora Jews as well. 
is the is that the dedication of or the rededication of Robinson's Arch as a place of sacred egalitarian prayer, and I'm using those words mm -hmm. very deliberately, would be accompanied by a major gathering of diaspora Jews, pilgr a pilgrimage to Robinson's well, Arch. Well, bigger than every, every year and every week in the thousands. In a way that creates that space. It, it is, you'll see it's already happening. No, and and look, I've, exactly been, I've been, I've been to Barnhart Mitzvahs yeah. there, and it's, you, it's, you have a feeling of sneaking through. Once there is a respectable entrance, we have a dedication ceremony in which we declare victory. There is now official egalitarian prayer. This is as much the Kotel as the other. And you know, Rachel, I like your idea very much that those who, uh, who, who affirm Robinson's Arch will make a commitment to say, this is where I'm going to have my prayer life. The we, and we do that already, but I'm trying to say it's behind it. That is not, it's not a solution. Let's take a few uh, questions. We have quite a few from uh, people on the chat and from earlier. Um, Yossi, you, you mentioned several times the status quo. Rabbi Jonathan didn't say where he's from. Rabbi Jonathan, hope you're with us. Uh, said that your argument, your, your argument about the status quo does not negate the need to bring everyone to a new status quo that reflects modern sensibilities. Now, I'm sure both of you have seen and many of you have seen old photographs of the Kotel in the pre-state days, and men and women were in fact in the same space together. Now that's a different environment, of course, but that was once the status quo. And when the, uh, um, in the pre-state, uh, Yeshu wanted to make a small change and allow prayer and the Turkish uh, rulers send donkeys through it, that was another change in the status quo. And every time there's the term status quo, it, the status quo keeps changing. There's no such thing. There may be a status quo for 47 years, but right. what makes status quo, so how many status quo have there been, and what makes status quo such a, in itself, a holy kind of a situation? Look, the ultimate status quo that I would like to see at the Kotel is exactly what you want to see, Rachel. That's the status quo. The status quo that once existed when men and women were able to pray side by side at the wall. Today, thanks to Jewish sovereignty, the dark side of the gift of Jewish sovereignty is that we have a, 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 at least for now, an, un, an, an unmovable uh, religious establishment. The question then is creating, and, and what Rabbi Jonathan pointed out is exactly right. I'm advocating a new status quo in which there will be parallel walls, parallel spaces at the same wall. But do, the, do you not see the efforts of the women of the wall as part of the larger movement if they're the perhaps shock troops? Uh, that are out there really on the front lines and all these other things are happening, would the uh, Beit Fila in Tel Aviv have any real support? Would the uh, recent ruling that was allowing some non-Orthodox rabbis to get government funding, would any of that happen without even, without this as being part of the more, I don't want to say extreme, but the edgiest part of the movement that you find uh, happening throughout the country. It's not edgy, it's not even uh, reform, it's filled with orthodox, conservative, reconstructionist and reform women. It's been going on for more than 25 years. Perhaps that's a status quo. I don't think it's going to end. I think it's only growing, and I think it's remarkable. And I think about just a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, there with a major philanthropist, and one day she's at the main hotel at one of the archaeological sites there, mm -hmm. um, and the next day she's at Women of the Wall. And she considers that entire site to belong to her and to the Jewish people. But the rabbi of the hotel could then solicit her for a major gift. And the next month, she would have her talit, her, her prayer shawl, confiscated from her. And that seems to be an absurd reality. Of course it's absurd. Well. Of course it's absurd. But these are the things that are you want to leave with the power of that. Of I, that want, I want to leave them with their ball and to, have my own to, ball. to confiscate my talit. I want to, no, I want you That's to they be, have the right to do now. I want you to be able to bring your talit to a rededicated and renovated part of the wall which we will turn into a space for, and, and, for sacred And I'm saying military. that has already happened. No, it, it hasn't. It, 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 it has happened at <coughs> a great expense. Is, are you and comfortable at that space? Is that space no, renovated? No, it's not. So this is, no, this is the victory of the women in the world. It's not a right central now. meeting point for the Jewish people in Jerusalem. It is not. Okay, we're talking, but, but now we're just talking in circles. Because I agree with you 
the Kotel as it is now, we think of it as that's the Kotel. What I'm talking about is a long-term process mm -hmm. in which we shift, which a large part of the Jewish people says, that's not our space anymore. This is now well, our I space. I think that's like trying to move the temple itself to another location in Tel Aviv. I, I think that you're asking but it's that kind of a move of the Jewish It's soul. not Tel Aviv, it, it is the wall. That's what I think it's but it like is the wall. I think that the situation that we're in requires a kind of creative spiritual solution, which which demonstrations, prayer demonstrations, have not been able to do. Now, where the women of the world have succeeded, they've pushed the Supreme Court into pushing the government into renovating Robinson's Arch, which is exactly why I say this is the moment to declare victory. And if you keep saying no, this is not a victory, then it will it will be a squandered moment. And, and I think that to insist that people who feel oppressed and feel pushed to the back of the bus declare victory in a situation where it's not what they're searching to achieve is also to have a non-conversation. I would welcome you to join the conversation about what exactly could happen in the committee and the charitable trust that actually controls that space. Could there be multiple kinds of representation on it? What are the possible solutions for a space that the Jewish people has been connected to for thousands of years? And I don't think that thousands and thousands of people are going to relinquish their connection to a space, no matter what you or I do at Robin. So what you're saying in advance that it's not possible, and the alternative that you're offering is more and more frustration. Rachel, it's a dead end. It's not going to happen. Okay, that's what I you're, respectfully you're, disagree. You're a messy in this thing. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> um, uh, A couple more questions, but maybe maybe this one for you, Rachel. Um, EOC seems to be suggesting that uh, not all Jews can always always pray in the same place, and just the same way there are Orthodox, Reform, and Conservative shuls throughout Israel, throughout the Jewish world, and there are people who won't go in the shul, and you know the old joke about the two shuls and the man on the uh, desert island. Um, so is it so problematic that, uh, that the, the Kotel is in fact declared a, an Orthodox parasite, an ultra-Orthodox parasite even, and Robinson's Arch is the egalitarian parasite, and um, um, over time, if as the numbers will prove themselves out, perhaps that the the, the value, the uh, the way people view Robinson's Arch will in fact rise in their estimation. And the Kotel as a place where it's a uh, rampant tourism and people uh, bothering you when you want to pray, looking for money, and and the constant noise and it, it's it's not a, a place for spiritual contemplation. It's a big gathering of the Jewish people, and we should all be welcome to be there and to pray there or be disturbed in our prayer there equally. It is not an Orthodox synagogue. It is a site of huge spiritual and collective and archaeological and historical significance to the entire Jewish people, and it belongs to all of us. We all need to have equal access and equal opportunity to be able to give voice to our prayer and to our celebrations there. There is no other option except to continue to have this conversation. And if we think it's futile in our lifetime, then we'll have many, many more years to talk about possible solutions. Um, all right, I want to uh, read a, a comment we received before the program um, from Peggy Sidor. Uh, if I pro hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. Peggy Sidor, excuse me, she identifies herself as a member of the board of the Organization of Women in the Wall. And she, she says that for many, the struggle at the Kotel is part of a feminist engagement that cannot accept women that should be excluded from such an important site just because they are women. And at the same time, however, it's beyond that, and it's kind of along the lines of what Rachel said, that it's part of the uh, Jewish Renaissance that you're talking about in Israel, a non-Orthodox Jewish Renaissance. And she sees her quest for prayer with the Talit and reading aloud from the Torah scroll at the Kotel itself as part of a beautiful Renaissance of our Judaism that through the Zionist reality is something that is now capable of happening. We're now able to do this in the Kotel under our own um, uh, government, under our own uh, control. And to, to not be allowed to do that, as Rafael uh, excludes a large portion of the Jewish people who, and as we know, um, in North America, this is a, perhaps even a bigger issue for North American Jews than in Israel. 
but it's one of those things that tends to pull North American Jews away from Israel, except for uh, a, a small core of Orthodox who are with Israel, perhaps no matter what. But the larger numbers of North American Jews are leaving simply because we can't even seem to give anybody equal rights in, in perhaps in an Americanness, but we can't give anybody equal rights. How, how is that, how are you going to explain the the side-by-side -side separation to a North American audience that threw out segregation and separate but equal 50, 60 years ago? Peggy, if you're out there, uh, let me say that uh, I totally agree you should be praying at the Koto in a Talit. The question is, perhaps, uh, at least partly, uh, a linguistic problem, because we're speaking about Robinson's Arch, and I think we should be speaking about the Southwest Koto. And it is the Koto. It is as much the Koto as the part of the Koto that we now call the Koto. And if you're asking, Alan, how do we explain to American Jews this question of segregation? I see this as, as a question of, um, of creating parallel spaces with sacred spaces. Now, look, the Kotel, in a sense, represents the spiritual brokenness of the Jewish people. It always did. The Kotel always did represent our exile. And, and even now that we return to the Kotel, as a sovereign state with an army, it represents our spiritual brokenness in another way. And that spiritual brokenness is that we've come, is that we've, we've come back home or we've entered the modern world as a deeply fragmented people. One can think of Catholicism and Protestantism and, and, and those schisms. We have our own deep schisms. Now, to use a model of segregation when we're talking about sacred space uh, is, is, to me, deeply inappropriate. It's inappropriate because the, the, the termina sociological or political terminology uh, breaks down when you're talking about sacred space. And rather than fight squabble over sacred space, I feel that, that what we need to do is, is figure out how we can all pray in proximity if we can't pray together. We can pray together. That's part Not of the tragedy. We That's can share the space. Rachel, have a space yes, to yes, it would be wonderful if we could. But so if if rather oh, than you want Rachel, wait, wait, rather than yes, I, I I what I'm saying is that we need to create a space that will be so powerful spiritually mm -hmm. that it will draw the hundreds of thousands of people that you're talking about, not only from the diaspora. Again, how many Israelis stopped going to the Kota? You and I know many Israelis who, who haven't been to the Kota in years. Because they don't want to get married to the relatives. Oh, exactly right. It's so another question. I want, to to break I want, no, Rachel, I don't want to perpetuate it. I wish we could break it down. But again, I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're talking in circles. So let's, let's. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, a, no, no, it's, it's, it's an interesting point. We're just for you to say It's an line. interesting point. You, you want to make the sacred the new and have us let go, let go of the old sacred space. Until that, not let go of it emotionally, but say, look, if you're not going to accommodate, you're not going to allow my understanding of sacred prayer to be expressed. Mm -hmm. In this space, mm -hmm. the government has offered me an alternative space. I'm going to turn that into, into my sacred space. And what will determine whether that space is sacred is the quality of our devotion at that space. It is, and I don't need to judge anybody's quality of devotion. And we've been le leading beautiful services then, there then, for then years. Let's, then let's augment that. that. No, but I, I, I think even to augment it, which we will, and we will continue to uh, build and renovate and have beautiful, powerful ceremonies there all the time, it doesn't begin, you know, see, to address or answer the question of what's happening at that other site that the Jewish people in its entirety considers to be symbolic of the temple and of returning home and of being together. I actually think the point here is not to be separate but equal, but to find a way to live in the Jewish state 
together at the same places, maybe not doing the same prayer at the same time. I accept that. I don't want to take it away from any Orthodox or Haredi person, God forbid, but to be able to live in this country as in our sacred spaces as equals. I think that is going to be the key to the survival of the Jewish people here, and it's going to be the key to our connection with our Jewish brothers and sisters in the diaspora and your connection and desire to want to come here and express yourselves. As long as diaspora Jews feel shut out, shut down, and literally detained and arrested, I think that will be tragic. Exactly right. So I think that the key to our survival here is finding ways in which we can accommodate imperfectly, given the reality as it is now, begin to create new alternatives that will then allow all Jews to have connecting spaces here. In the same way, Rachel, that when we talk about um, creating non-Orthodox spaces here mm -hmm. for diaspora Jews, mm -hmm. they're not going to plug, non-Orthodox diaspora Jews are not going to plug into Orthodox Israel. Right. But so we need to be funded. So we, oh, of course, mm -hmm. but they're not. No, this they're not. This is symbolic but for, the first, for the first time, the, is the Israeli government is going to put money we don't know how much money yet, and that's part of our job, is to, is to hold them to serious budgets, serious renovations. For the first time you have an Israeli government, this Israeli government of all governments, with Shah sitting in there, budgeting funds for non-Orthodox prayer at the Kotel. And you're telling me that's insignificant. No, that's I didn't say that. I said that's we'll something. continue. We'll celebrate it. We'll continue. We're moving ahead. We want to make sure it's successful. But the message you're conveying to diaspora mm -hmm. Jews is is that that is that where is that where where is is that no? You're conveying a message to them that it's basically all or nothing. It's no, all or nothing. No, it's about finding a way. There are spaces that belong to the entire Jewish people. And it's about finding a way to share those resources of space, as well as finding a way to make sure that we have shared resources uh, of other kinds. The improvements at Robinson's Arch will be a wonderful and important and celebrated achievement. Uh, uh, however, okay. however, that needs to happen. No, however, what I'm trying to say is that needs to happen at every single progressive shul all over Israel. I want to see that same kind of Israeli governmental affirmation of all of our institutions and all of our synagogues all over Israel. If that happens, then I think diaspora Jews will be able to feel the kind of connection and commitment that you want them to. We are currently quite far from that reality. Of course we are, but we're but something has changed in the state of Israel. And not to con not to amplify that, not to say we have an opportunity now. Mm -hmm is to shortchange us. And, and, and again, I'm really afraid that in our determination to go for, 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 for everything at this point, we're going to squander an historic opening. Right, and I think the opposite is true. Yeah. To not okay. continue to do that would be to squander the opportunity of what the Jewish people and the Jewish soul are seeking today. Uh, clearly, we haven't exhausted either the questions or the conversation. Um, one of the things I learned a long time ago at the Hartman Institute is that uh, the, we don't really expect everybody to come to agreement at the end of a, of a meeting, whether it's an interface session, whether it's a scholarly session, or whether it's even a session among uh, very, very close colleagues, but that we continue talking to one another, listening to one another, and respecting one another. And I think we've started that tonight. Uh, this conversation can and will go on. I expect a month from now, uh, Rosh Chodesh. The next verse, Chodesh, there'll be more. Uh, this will be in the news again. So I want to. invited Yossi to come on. And yes, I'm one of, one of our. Because uh, you're welcome to come. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be able to get in with a tummy. Okay. I, I have been there in the past. I've been at both sides, and uh, um, I think. You weren't throwing chairs. No, I think I think that both I think that both uh, parts of the Kotel as it were have their have their strengths and their weaknesses, and maybe strengthening strengthening Robinson's arch. Uh, will uh, go some ways, but um, Rachel continues to make the point that if it's separate uh, but not equal, that if it's separate, it just can't be equal, or it can't be a way to bring people together. So I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight uh, in Israel, this afternoon in New York, and in this morning, especially in the West Coast and wherever else you are. Uh, we'll follow this up, as I said.